says, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor, but open your hand to give to meet the need. Pastors can just get caught up in talking about giving just as finances. And I want to talk about giving as emotion in our lives, all right? Today, uh, we recognize that the follow-through and the actions of giving in our lives is God's blessing upon our lives, and that follow-through of giving and how God continues to bless the work in which we give. That our giving and that the work of our lives and that following through on that motion does not begin with that, oh, 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 ah, here you go. It begins with, wow, God has already been at work giving to us. And so that motion just kind of gives one of these, whoo.
the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Welcome to Harvester Online. I'm Jen, and today we've got a really great service for you. So. One of the local pastors in our area, Pastor Joe Pearl, who is the director of a food pantry, um, real local, about 30 minutes away from where we are, is, is going to be sharing something that's on his heart. He's going to be speaking from Deuteronomy 15, 4 through 15, which is a, which is a great uh, example of Old Testament God. I know everybody thinks that Old Testament God is just a big fuddy-duddy who wants to strike people down with, uh, with lightning. That's not who he is. This is a passage that lets you see that God was really interested in taking care of the people who couldn't, couldn't take care of themselves. In this case, it was the people who were poor. And so, so that's, that's what uh, Pastor Joe is, is going to be talking about. Um, like I said, this is, this is a part of his heart and what he's really called to do and what he enjoys doing. And so this is a really great, uh, great sermon for you to, to listen to. During this sermon, you're going to hear about um, a new ministry that the big church, the, the church that, uh, that we're showing you a service from, is, uh, is participating in starting this week, uh, which is Food on the Move. Food on the Move is an opportunity for people in the, in the area to be able to go out and get supplies, uh, get some of the necessities that they have uh, and it'll be happening at, um, at our church. So it's just a really, really great, uh, great time and a real good example of what's, what the people of God are supposed to do. And so I'm really excited to, uh, to let you hear from Pastor Joe and hear what's, uh, what's on his heart. Amen. Good to be with you. My name's Pastor Joe Pearl, and um, I will be uh, with you this morning as we journey in the scriptures. Let's turn in our scriptures today to the gospel. Or, no, let's don't turn to the gospel. <laughs> let's turn to the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to be looking at uh, some things there for us today. Um, life is short, isn't it? And we have a lot of things going on in our lives. I am so excited to see in your bulletin and the upcoming announcement about Food on the Move. That's a great idea in partnering with uh, the St. Louis Food Bank. I live in Wright City and uh, direct the food pantry there. And we also do a program uh, called drive Through Pantry with St. Louis Food Bank. And it is a great opportunity to often connect with people that are hidden or that are living in the margins of our community that need those uh, essential resources. And so when we supply, when we partner and engage the community in those ways, our community and our families are much more stable. Amen. We don't have people wandering the streets. We don't have kids wondering where their next meal or what's going to be happening is coming from. And there they are, that opportunity is to hear the bread of life and those opportunities come to them. So I encourage you to invest in that, to volunteer as a part of that, and to be a part of those programs that are engaging in our community. Exciting stuff that is ahead. Uh, good to see that. But we know that life is short, and oftentimes, if when we uh, connect into the world, it can short-circuit us from who we are and who God has for us and the plan that he has for us. And so I want to talk a little bit today about um, how the world can often short-circuit a part of our lives and that short circuit comes through a giving in our lives. And oftentimes, uh, pastors will get caught up talking about giving as just finances. No amens on that one. I know that happens. But I'll come back over here and we'll work on this side for a while. But uh, oftentimes, pastors can just get caught up in talking about giving just as finances. I mean, all right. Okay, we're on track today. Okay, gold stars for everybody that stays awake today. 
Uh, but yeah, but giving is just a whole part of our lives, amen? Giving is, a, is all that we are. And I want to talk about giving as emotion in our lives, all right? Now, we know emotions in our lives. We see that in various parts of the world and expressions in art, in music. Maybe you've seen motion in Michael Jackson and his moonwalk. Let me, you thought I was going to do that, didn't you? You, you don't know me very well. I have no motion in my body. I cannot do that. But anyway, we see that. But that comes from God, and we want to discover a little bit more about how that overflow happens in our lives. That's one of the themes of NYC 23 this year, the overflow of our lives. And I, I want to talk a little bit more and connect in about how that is a part of our lives today today. Uh, we recognize that the follow-through in the actions of giving in our lives is God's blessing upon our lives, and that follow-through of giving and how God continues to bless the work in which we give. And so that's really the flow. That's the track of motion in our lives, blessing and giving and blessing. And we want to look into that. Giving is an act of worship and a part of a larger path that God really has for us. Today, let's turn and look at our passage from Deuteronomy and see how God describes that to the nation of Israel. So we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 15, and I'm going to start with verse 1. I'm sorry, verse 4. Hear the word of the Lord. There will, however, be no one in need among you, because the Lord is sure to bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you as a possession to occupy. This is uh, Moses talking to the people. If you only will obey the Lord your God by diligently observing this entire commandment that I command you today, when the Lord your God has blessed you as he promised you, you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. You will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. If there is among you anyone in need, a member of your community, in any of your towns within the land that the Lord God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor. You should rather open your hand willingly, leading enough, lending enough to meet the need, whatever it may be. Be careful that you do not entertain a mean thought of thinking. The seventh year, the year of remission is near, and therefore view your needy neighbor with hostility and give nothing. Your neighbor might cry to the Lord against you, and you will incur guilt. Give liberally and be ungrudgingly when you do so. For on this account, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake. Since there will never cease to be some in need on the earth, I therefore command you, open your hand to the poor and needy neighbor in your land. If a member of your community, whether a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, is sold to you and works for you six years, in the seventh year you shall set that person free. And when you send a, sla a man slave or a male slave out from you, a free person, you now shall not send him out empty-handed. Provide liberally out of your flock, your threshing floor, and your wine press, thus giving to him some of the bounty with which the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. For this reason, I lay this command upon you today. This is the reading of God's word for us today. Amen. Gracious God, as we enter into this passage and into our time, we just pray that you open our ears and open our eyes and our minds and our hearts to all that you have for us, that we may be the people of God and your children that you are calling us to be in the powerful name of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. So a little background on this text that we're looking at today. Moses speaks to the people of Israel about the expectations of the Lord on how they will act as a nation of God. They are entering into the promised land, and Moses has been gathering them through the desert, and they are to be the people of God. 
And these are the things that God has for them. And so we see that the motion of giving is a follow-through action from what God has already given to us. We see that, uh, we see the ground from which we act in verse 6. When the Lord your God has blessed you as he has promised you. And we see it in verse 7. The land that the Lord your God is giving you. You see, God is the creator and sustainer of life. Amen? All right, I got a little bit over there. But God really is. He is the creator and sustainer of all that we are. Life begins with God. And it is from his word of promise and his hands that we have all that we have. God has blessed us, our very life, the things that we do, the energy that we have, the breath that we breathe each day. These things are from God. And we are not owners of them. We are not owners of the things that are around us, the house that we live in. Yes, the world has given us a title and signed off and signature, but we recognize that all of these things are gifts from God. And we are not the owners, but we are the stewards. Because honestly, we're not going to be on this earth forever. No amens to that. Nobody likes that, but it's true. We are stewards. God has given this only for a portion of time. And we are tasked with using it and being good stewards for what God has given us. He's given us great blessings. And God has gifted us and granted us with these things. And so we see as we look into our passage, we recognize that the word that the Hebrews use for gift and really Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this or recognized this before, but the Hebrew language is very concrete. It's an ancient language. And so when they use words, they often attach them to very physical connections in our body. And so one example of that is the Hebrew word for anger, which means flaming nostrils. I don't know if you know that, but yeah, oh, you've got flaming nostrils today. What's going on? And so the Hebrew words are often attached to very physicalness or actions that they can recognize and give purpose to. And when we realize what those meanings are, it gives a fuller understanding of what the Hebrews are trying to say when they express things. And so uh, anger means flaming nostrils, but the word for gift in Hebrew, not, in Hebrew used 1,900 times means to extend the arms. Yeah, isn't that interesting? That has a lot of potential for us as we try to understand what they are saying. So, of course, the definition is, gift in Hebrew is, it encompasses an especially broad concept whose fundamental meaning is not give or make a gift, but rather it is to extend the hand in order to place an object at a specific place or to give it over to another person. So to give really is to extend the hand and take for someone can have what is in your hand, to send that out and to extend that hand. And so it is to give, uh, to put it into a specific place or to give over to another person with or without compensation as a possession. It is a result of this action is usually considered enduring or definitive. And so it is not a short term. It's an extension of who you are, giving that possession and enduring and definitive as it is to be defined by. And so in this language, we recognize and can understand what they are trying to say, what Moses is trying to portray in what he says to this. We can have an attitude, an extension of gifting, because God has first extended his hand to us with blessing and possessions. Amen? Because our gifting does not begin with us. It begins with the extension of God's hands. And so when we recognize that, then then we, we get a feel for an understanding of the motion that God is talking about and he's trying to portray to the Hebrews and I believe to us. 
that our giving and that the work of our lives and that following through on that motion does not begin with that, oh, 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 ah, here you go. It begins with, wow, God has already been at work giving to us. And so that motion just kind of gives one of these, whoo, right? I mean, I'm not Jesse Ventura or um, any of the others, but really that extension is already happening before us. And God, as God moves to give to us, that extension he expects is that we just give of all that we are. And all that we are is an extension of those hands. And so therefore, we can have an attitude of graciousness because God has already been working and extending to us. So he says you don't have to be grudgingly or you don't have to be hard-hearted or tight-fisted or stiff-necked. I love that one. That's a tough one, isn't it? Nobody likes stiff-necked over here. But uh, yeah, it's part of that, isn't it? And so we don't have to be that way because God has already reflected of who he is, his character to us through the extension of giving to us. And so we can just reflect what God is already doing in our lives. Now, there comes a time when someone will need something around you, Moses says in verse 7. And you are to complete that motion of giving, of blessings that God has given you in your very self. But Moses gives this warning in verse 7. Moses gives them a warning and And that if you do not follow through with this giving and that you stop being a person of motion, of flow and overflow, he says, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor, but open your hand to give to meet the need. And in verse 9, do not entertain a mean thought. Now, that's a toughie. View them, don't view them with hostility or give them nothing, for your neighbor might cry out against you to the Lord. And you will incur guilt. It's a reference to when the Israelites called out to God because of being oppressed in Egypt. But and so there's a hint there, there's something going on underneath that text for us. That Moses says in all of the transactions, in all of the things and relationships that we have, that it's not just between you and I. God is involved in all that we are, in our transactions, in our relationships, in all that we do, in all that we are. And so if you were to hold back and someone were to cry out to God because God hears the cries of his people, that's a good place for an amen. We're, we're going to work over here for a while because, we're <laughs> because God has given to us and he is involved in all that we are, amen? And so as we work in that, we recognize that. And if someone were to cry out to the Lord and him hear them, then God's going to be coming back to our doorstep to talk to us. And we hear the Holy Spirit as he works in our lives and speaks to our heart. Romans says he speaks to our heart and tells us that we are children of God. He is at work speaking to us. So we recognize Moses is already telling them, look, God is in this transaction. He is in the work of our relationships. And be weary that you do not treat someone harshly. Because as they speak out to God, God will speak to us and challenge us and work with us on who we are. And woe to us if he withdraws his spirit from us. We cannot feel and tap into a world that is short-circuited that said, ah, you know, it's not a big deal. I forgot to say something or I spoke to them harshly. Or these transactions, man, I really ripped that one up, got the better hand on that one. God is in these works And it is calling upon us to be the people of God and to treat each other fairly and to be graciously to one another in all that we do because of the motion of giving. Because God has already blessed us. 
We are to be that extension of the hands of God in the relationships and in all that we are on this world because we are not going to be here forever. And so there is a challenge that we have with that, that we are to give ungrudgingly and not to entertain a mean thought, viewing them with hostility or giving nothing to our neighbor who cries out. We are to give in verse 10. Verse 10 says to give liberally and ungrudgingly and God will bless you in all of your work. So we hear the cycle of giving. Here's the cycle and the motion of giving that is up to us to complete. God has committed his part to us and we are to follow through with that motion of ours and that he will bless us in our work. Now, Pastor Joe, I don't know about you, but things can be tight. They've been tight for a while and I don't see a lot of God's blessings. Well, you know, we're not necessarily talking about things. Now, the world likes to add up things, and it, the world likes to buy extra storage units. In fact, if you drive along Highway 70 in Wright City, there's tons of storage units in our next county. And they're all over. People love to keep their stuff. I mean, you've seen, what's that show, uh, Hoarders? Yeah, oh my goodness. Ooh, man, I'm telling you, something short-circuited, right? And that happens there. But we recognize as a part of that, that as God has been abundant in our lives, as he has blessed us with friends, as he has blessed us with family, as he has blessed us with church, spiritually, as he has poured himself through the Holy Spirit into us, and as that comes out in our lives, we are blessed. And that is where we begin. And, and the world will short-circuit us and say, well, you don't have all of these things. Or you have all of these things, but you can still be bankrupt. Yeah. But all part of that is who we are in God. And it's gifted us. I mean, everyone has at least one gift, right? Yeah. And so we can ex exercise that and be a part of that. And God has given us, and so that is to follow through. And we are to extend our hands to one another and to those around us, not, those, not just those who treat us well. well. Let me back up for that and come back over here. Not just to those people who treat us like we want to be treated. Right? Yeah. That's a tough one. And so that follow through, God says to follow through for us is to give as I have given you and I will continue to bless and I will continue to look after and take care of you in those things. So Pastor Joe, what are the implications for that motion of giving in our lives? I'm glad you asked that question. Physically, what does that mean for us? Holding on to things forever is not what God intended. Holding on to things forever is not what God intended. Why did he create rust in the first place? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Verse 4 relates to us that the land God has given us is for us to occupy and not to own. We are only passing through this world and God is the rightful owner. And we, when we can adjust our understanding to connect in that way, then we step into that motion, that wave of God's presence and his giving in our lives, and our lives can begin to exercise what that motion is for us. When someone comes to us and make a loan or a payment on a debt, we are not to gouge them nor let them leave empty-handed, but we are to be generous in our dealings with one another. Do not hoard your resources. The poor are always with us, and we should always be giving. Our life should always be in motion and learning. Now, I'm not just talking about things. I'm talking about who we are in our time, in our presence. But, ah, Pastor Joe, I don't have a lot of that. You have what you make time for. 
you do. Now that's challenging. You might have to get things organized a little bit more. But there is part of that motion in getting things connected. Not only physically, but socially. We are not to treat the poor and our neighbors as second-class citizens. They are our neighbors. And we treat everyone as God's child. We are to look after one another, and we are to be our brother and sister's keeper. That is challenging. Because, Pastor Joe, they don't think like I do. They don't believe like I do. They don't treat me like I treat other people. I've got this neighbor. And my son and I play catch in the backyard. Isaac, you might know Isaac. And um, oftentimes, Isaac would throw it where I couldn't reach it. Now, I don't jump as high as I used to for obvious reasons. And the ball would roll into the neighbor's yard. And crazy enough, if that neighbor wouldn't open the window and say, get out of my yard. I was like, I'm just picking up the ball. I'm getting out. But sure enough, you know, the ball would roll over again. And we'd switch sides. And I would throw it over Isaac's head. And it would roll in there like, ah, I, I, ah. And so the window would go up. Get out of my yard. You're trespassing. I'm going to call the police. I was like, God, it's just a ball. But you know, that's where they were at. But that means that I need to tune in. Something is going on. And there are challenges. But I should not be any slighted. Slight that neighbor because obviously something is going on in need of help. Socially, we have to look after one another. But spiritually, Pastor Joe, what does that mean? In verse 9, your neighbor might cry out to the Lord against you. The assumption of these texts is that social transactions in Israel were never between two parties, but it involved God as well who is the third party in all that we are, who sustains the poor, who especially is looking after the widow and the orphan and those in the margins. In verse 15, remember that you are once a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord redeemed you. It's a reminder that amnesia can lead you to selfish thinking in what you do. You can forget what God has done for you. And it can be put on a back burner. And we can forget all that Jesus Christ and his sacrifice has done for us. And we can get in that rut that the world loves to get us into. We walk all in one line together. But we know that we have been redeemed by a huge sacrifice of Christ for us. And we cannot forget that we are debtors, that we, that God has done imaginable for us. We can't say, my power and the might of my own hands have gotten me this wealth. Amnesia invites the assumption that the current Distinction between haves and have-nots, creditors and debtors will always be this way with no need to make any adjustments or concessions for that. But our understanding is that Christ has done a work in us and that his kingdom that he initiates is coming and is already breaking into this world, and that we are to be a part of establishing that reign and rule of Christ where there are not have and have nots, and there are those who are high and middle and low, but that we walk arm in arm together, and that we take care of one another because Christ has taken care of us. We are God's people, and he loves us without conditions or worldly definitions. 
We simply are to, be ta- to take the resources and gifts that God has given us and use them for making God visible in the world. Okay, so that's the sermon. Yay! What do we do with that? What, what is there as homework? Man, I'm sorry I said that word. But it's a part of following through, right? And what we learn, what are we tight-fisted about in our lives right now? What is it that we are holding on so tight to? What causes us to respond and react with fear in our lives? Where is there resistance and resentment that we might be holding in our lives Where is there indifference that we've brushed off that maybe the Lord can speak anew to us? Ask the Lord God to help open our hearts today for what he is doing, where his spirit is willing to work and move in our lives. Maybe it's forgiving a debt that's been out there from someone that you're holding on to but you know probably will not get paid. Forgive it. Ah, Pastor Joe, that's a lot. Yeah, I know. But God is calling us to things like this. He will guide you and direct you as you seek him. Maybe it's time to release the envy and jealousy that you're holding with someone. It may be someone recently, or it may be a relationship in the past. Maybe you just need to soften up a little bit, or maybe I need to soften up a little bit. Maybe we need to lay down a burden that we've been carrying that's so heavy. And we need to just give it over to God to deal with because there's really nothing more we can do with it. We need to let God have it. Maybe we need to be a good neighbor. That's tough. And I I work with that myself from the illustration that I had. Maybe we just need to donate a coat or a pair of shoes uh, for when the winter comes. There are people that need those. Maybe we need to volunteer with food on the move as a part of that. But sometimes um, we need to smile. You know, we can just get grumpy. And sometimes, you know, I even call them, sometimes you can get crusty. You know what I'm saying? You can get a little crusty. My dad would get a little crusty sometimes. Just get a little grumpy. Uh, uh, uh. But maybe we need to just practice smiling. Bam, throw one of those smiles. Or you know Emerald Gulgasi, he has that... Uh, some seasoning that he throws on stuff. Anybody ever heard of him? Okay, I just need a little feedback every once in a while. Pastor Jason does so well, and I'm just not, I just need back and forth a little bit. Uh, we love our staff, don't we? Man, yeah, I love them. Who has for us? And so, but sometimes we just need to throw a smile in it. Even some, some walking down the street, people are going to say, Pastor Joe, people are going to think that I'm weird. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, you are weird. But throwing a smile changes the motion, right? It's that motion of giving, emotional giving that we have. Starting off with a smile and say, man, you know, God's done something for me. But Pastor Joe, I don't feel that way all the time. I know we got to work at it, right? Because when we smile, we got to mean it, right? Yeah. These are the things that we follow through with. These are the things that cause emotion, and cause us to get into that motion of giving in our lives. What is God calling us to do in these things? Let's consider that as our uh, musicians come up and sing our last song today. How can we respond to that? How can we be the people of God in this motion of giving that God calls us to?
bow and receive the blessing. Extend your hands. Oh, gracious God, you have blessed us beyond measure. And we pray that, Lord, we step into the great flow of motion that you are creating in us that we may be the people of God. So may we go from this place with the power of God and the spirit of Christ to move in about that we may be gracious, that we may be liberal, that we may be unbounding in all that we may give unto those around us, that we may be the people of God. And may we go in the name of Christ, whom the power was extended through the open grave. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. God so bless. during this time, we usually talk about what are the things that stood out to us during, uh, during this sermon. And I think that it was just Pastor Joe's main point, which is that it's all movement. 
you know it's giving is a is a part of a bigger process that happens um, I'm a process analyst when I'm not uh, when I'm not doing church and so process is a big part of my life understanding how things how think one thing leads into the next leads into the next and that's what he's explaining here he says that God blesses us and as an out as an outflow of that we we bless other people we serve other people and as an outflow of that God is able to uh, to bless us again and that's that's the movement that's that's how that's how the Christian life is supposed to, uh, to happen and so this was just a really really great encouragement uh, for me um, so going uh, going forward, you know, I want you to find a way to to bless somebody else. What what is something that you can do in your uh, in your community that's going to to bless somebody else? You know, um, I guess I've got to commit. Um, I'm saying this, so I've got to commit. I was just looking at my phone, and I've got a uh, I got a text from the blood center looking for my platelets. Um, so. I'm going to commit now to setting up an appointment and going out to try to give platelets um, sometime within the next week. So to, uh, next week, ask me how that, uh, how that went because I'm going to commit to, to doing that. God has blessed me and so giving my platelets, I think that's how I bless other people. Um, try, to, try to think of something that you can do in your community to, to help out. Um, otherwise, we invite you to hang out with us for a few more minutes. Um, we're going to have our talk back, and that's where we're going to have a moderated conversation. Me and uh, whoever else is online will we'll talk about what we saw in the in the service, and probably try to make some more uh, some more commitments like uh, like what I just did. Um, after that, we invite you back here next week, um, same time, same uh, same place. Uh, we're always looking for more people to, uh, to join us. So if you know anybody who's just looking for, looking for a church and they, they don't have a, a good way to get to one, send them our way. We'll see you later, or we'll see you in a couple of minutes.